everyone to 284 News. My name is Javon Wilson. I'm Kamal Hayes. And I'm Ron Grant. And we are so thrilled and happy to be coming to you live out of the beautiful British Virgin Islands. The content continues via our website, 284media.com. In today's news, BVI's curfew relaxed to 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. until October 1st, as we see 49% of the population being fully vaccinated against the COVID-19 virus. The BVI FA national team players Forbes and Chowell keep uh, Pools Town alive in England's FA, FAA sorry, uh, Youth Cup. We also see the BVI government promising to secure storage equipment for the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. We pan across to the Bahamas where uh, Minis is out and Davis is in and over in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Uh, reoccurring uh, vaccines, uh, all incoming internal visitors uh, come November. That's a requirement that we're going to be looking at closely. All this and so much more when 284 News returns. You value traditions. To You value music. You value education, family, I love you, <laughs> service, thank you, you're welcome, love, <laughs> life. At Popular, we're committed to you and everything our community values. For the things you value the most, count on us, Popular. Welcome everybody. It's Tuesday, September 21st, 2021. A terrific Tuesday to each and every one of you. We're coming live and direct from the beautiful British Virgin Islands. I'm Ron Grant. And my name is Yvonne Wilson. Always a pleasure, of course, to be bringing you your daily dose of local, regional, as well as international content. Of course, keeping you abreast of everything that's happening in the BVI and beyond. Now, we're going to start off our newscast. Uh, you've been hearing about it, but finally, viewers, some official word from the Minister of Health uh, on the BVI's curfew being relaxed to 1 a.m. Listen in. Cabinet and other moves decided that the public health COVID-19 control and suppression measures number four, amendment number seven, order 2021, be extended from the 16th of September 2021 to the 30th of September 2021. In addition, Cabinet accepted the HEOC's recommendation for the imposition of a curfew order number 13, order 2021, be extended for a further two weeks, commencing on the 19th of September 2021 and ending on the 1st of October 2021, and that the National Security Council be advised that the order be amended that the curfew apply between the hours of 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. All right, viewers, that was the Minister of Health. And today, uh, viewers, is celebrated as World Alzheimer's Awareness Day. Of course, we have been covering the stories all throughout the month of caregivers, uh, Mrs. Janice Brathwood Edwards and Ms. Dawn Career Leonard, uh, which are available to view on our, our website as well as Facebook page. Yes. Really understanding the magnitude of a task that it takes uh, to care with someone with Alzheimer's. Of course, this year's focus has been dementia. And uh, throughout the territory of the Virgin Islands, uh, persons have been painting the town purple in solidarity of this very uh, worthy cause. And of course, we're yes. rocking our purple as Indeed. well. Indeed. Of course, uh, continuing on, Education Minister has been chided by opposition leader for doing what he calls a media blitz amid poor state of schools. There was no misrepresentation of ESHS wall costs, says former Education Minister Myron Wallen while being questioned during another COI interview and mandatory COVID-19 testing for detainees due to non-cooperation, which we're going to get into later on. And uh, once again, we hear the Premier of the Virgin Islands saying that the country is far from broke. Viewers, as we dive straight into today's newscast, Minister of Health and Social Development, Honorable Carvin Malone, recently highlighted that some parents and guardians are reluctant to quarantine when picking up an unaccompanied minor from a BVI port of entry. Now, viewers, in an earnest attempt to ensure that any risks are avoided, the health minister revealed that Cabinet, uh, of course, Cabinet of the Virgin Islands, amended the laws which now mandates quarantine as well as exit testing for all adults in these situations. Listen in. During the summer months, a number of unvaccinated or at times partly vaccinated minors have arrived in the territory. Issues have arisen when the guardians who have come to collect them, then refused to be quarantined 
with these minors or refuse to pay for quarantine devices for the minors. In an attempt to address this situation, Cabinet decided that where an unaccompanied minor who is unvaccinated or partially vaccinated arrives at a port of entry, they, along with a parent or guardian, must be subject to quarantine and exit testing at the same time as the unaccompanied minor. Again, where, the, where there are issues of non-compliance and non-cooperation, we must let the law dictate and guide expectations. Now, viewers, according to the minister's September 20th COVID-19 update, 47 cases of COVID-19 sorry, are now confirmed in the territory. However, an alarming 35 of that 47 active case were traced within the Virgin Islands, indicating a high community transmission rate. Honorable Malone noted that these numbers are troubling and reiterated the need for all persons to abide by the health protocols in a concerted effort to lower those numbers. Now, Ron, I think this is a valid point uh, made, uh, of course, consideration given by the Cabinet of the Virgin Islands. Any adult person, whether parent or guardian, uh, picking up an unaccompanied minor who has not been fully vaccinated or um, not vaccinated at all comes into direct contact with that child and, of course, are at risk of contracting the virus. Yes, even for a fully vaccinated person, the risk is still there. But, of course, we continue to speak about uh, the reduced effect uh, COVID-19 has on someone who is fully vaccinated. I'm happy to see the Honorable uh, Minister, along with his ministry, Jovan, really uh, zoning in on this matter. Of course, uh, with any uh, system, there are loopholes and persons will take advantage of that. Um, I think it would have gone without saying for persons in these situations to understand that because of the uh, risk of exposure that they would need to quarantine. But nevertheless, we have it written down on paper and I think that should uh, uh, help us uh, quite a bit moving forward. I think one of the things that COVID-19 has brought to light uh, is, uh, and I guess it's based on the fluid fluidity of the yes. matter, is the fact that we have many gray areas and not uh, having those rules, those strict guidelines laid out. Uh, persons could be on both sides of the spectrum and essentially be doing what they want and putting the territory at risk. So I'm really happy to see the cabinet defining what needs to happen in this case. Indeed. Now, uh, panning across to the U.S. Virgin Islands, speaking of COVID-19, Senator Marvin Blyden may be stripped of his majority leader position in the Senate following Mr. Blyden's flouting of the VI Department of Health's COVID-19 protocols after he admitted to testing positive twice in the same day for COVID-19 and then attending a party two days later. Now, the Office of the Senate President Donna Fred Gregory announced Monday evening that as a result of the situation surrounding Mr. Blyden, a meeting was held with the Senate Vice President Norville Francis and Senator uh, Secretary Gene Genevieve Whitaker. In a, an official quote, they said it has been determined that the matter warrants the establishment of a committee on ethical conduct pursuant to the rules of the 34th legislator. In addition, further, the leadership have filed a formal complaint to the Committee of Ethical Conduct. The Committee of Catholic, sorry, on Ethical Conduct will be responsible for investigating the allegations and making a final determination on this matter. The committee will convene by the end of this week. Now, it is important of viewers to understand and note they say that the leadership of the 34th legislator over in the U.S. Virgin Islands instituted COVID-19 protocols to protect senators, employees, and the public from the spread of the coronavirus, stated the release. This matter is extremely serious in nature, and we have to ensure the public that we take the coronavirus pandemic seriously. We cannot hold senators to different standards. If anything, senators must be held at a higher standard as we represent the people of the territory, said uh, Mrs. Gregory Fret in an interview with, of course, the VI consortium. Now, the Senate president called the matter egregious and said she expects the committee to move swiftly. I have asked the committee to convene by the end of this week to conduct investig investigatory uh, work once they have conducted their investigatory work and they send their report up to the Senate president and the entire body. We will move forward, she said, with the next steps. It cannot take this matter lightly because based on the information that has been shared with us, this matter is erroneous in nature, she said. 
Now, Mr. Blyden also uh, used information uh, which received by our newsroom. He also used the government's legislator-owned vehicle, LEG5, to attend the Saturday night event at Tillet Gardens in St. Thomas. Uh, Jovan, as we speak of COVID-19 and the tremendous impact that it has had on the uh, territory of the BVI as well as the U.S. Virgin Islands, we see where a sitting senator, um, uh, Senator Marvin uh, Blyden, uh, while uh, testing positive uh, twice within the same day, uh, deliberately and consciously uh, went out into the general public and attended um, events in the U.S. Virgin Islands, which is absolutely daunting uh, because as of uh, just today, the U.S. Virgin Islands had its 68 that that was related to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Now we've all seen the uh, tremendous impacts of COVID-19, not only uh, in the Virgin Islands, but regionally and internationally as well. And I think uh, like the Senate over in the uh, USVI stating that uh, this is going to go uh, uh, before its ethical board because something has to be done. Um, when we see the magnitude of effects, uh, to have a sin sitting senator uh, behave in this manner and put persons at risk, I think is a uh, highly um, uh, deplorable and I think that uh, it should be served as an example, uh, but it is quite unfortunate. Definitely and reckless behavior coming from yes. our officials. One thing I can say about our BVI officials, and this of course is not in an effort to compare, you rarely see our BVI officials out in a public setting, and I think it really speaks volumes to not only the implications and, and the seriousness of serious nature of COVID-19, but also the fact that they believe in setting and leading by example. And I think this is the precedence that should be set by yes. all officials, especially within this region. And Ron, yes, uh, it should be up against that ethical board because as leaders, we want to ensure that we are leading by example, but more more importantly, uh, when making decisions and, and when making mandates, mind you, for the population to follow, we need to be ensuring that we too are abiding by those protocols. Absolutely. So viewers, we're going to keep you posted on that story. But up next, BVI government is looking to purchase storage equipment for Moderna and Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines and the BVI FA national team players, Forbes and Chowell, to uh, keep a pool town alive in England's FA Youth Cup. And we take a look at this and other stories right after a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Ultra fast downloads, seamless streaming, and even more reliable connectivity on an all new fire blazing, super fast CCT Fire Network. CCT Fire, bring it home and upgrade today. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284 Media at cctbdi.com. Advertising with us works. Viewers, welcome back to 284 News. Now, in an effort to provide alternative brands of vaccines, the government of the Virgin Islands has revealed its intention to secure equipment that will allow for the effective storage of the Pfizer as well as Moderna brands. This was revealed by Minister of Health and Social Development, Honorable Carvin Malone, in a COVID-19 public update on September 20th. Listen in. The United Kingdom government continues to honor its pledge to supply the total number of AstraZeneca vaccines doses required for all eligible persons residing in the British Virgin Islands. As an update, your government is seeking to purchase the, sub, the super sub-zero cold storage facilities that will be required for the storage of both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. Further, the British government has also pledged to supply all amounts of both vaccines required for eligible persons, including schools, including the school-aged children from 12 to 17. Now, viewers, the health minister believes that this will up the territory's fully vaccinated count of 47 percent, which he noted is still a far cry from government school of herd immunity. He laid out the numbers just yesterday. Listen in. To date, the vaccination rate stands at 49.2%, representing 14,764 persons being registered as fully vaccinated. 
Another 2,629 persons await their second doses, which, once completed, the number of persons fully vaccinated will be 57.9%, representing 17,393 persons. While these figures are headed in the right direction, the fact remains that, they're, they're, that we are seeking to obtain a fully vaccinated goal of 75% of our population, which will represent 22,500 persons. We are not there yet. Now, Ron, even though we have seen full availability of the AstraZeneca vaccine, which, of course, we've inherited by way of the United Kingdom, clearly there still has been lots of vaccine hesitation in the territory. Many persons blaming that on the, uh, the, the, the fact that not a lot of brands are available here. As a matter of fact, only the AstraZeneca brand is currently available. Yes, persons were able to uh, benefit from Pfizer by traveling to the USVI by way of that uh, collaboration. But outside of that, BVI landers, residents alike, have been calling for more options to be made available to the population. I'm really happy to see that after having lots of conversation, and of course, questioning why aren't we uh, uh, securing the, the equipment necessary, being that our very own neighbors, our USVI, has done so. Why are we not doing that? I'm really happy to see not only is the government pursuing this, but also the United Kingdom government willing to provide both the Moderna and Pfizer brands for our population. One thing comes to mind when I think about the vaccination. Yes, it's all good and well for us to be vaccinated, uh, but Ron, now that uh, vaccination is becoming such a, a core part of our community. We want to ensure as well that we can verify these vaccination Indeed. cards. And one of the things I, I recognize is that in the UK, the vaccination card actually comes with a QR Correct. code, which is detectable digitally. As well we as other uh, uh uh, overseas territories. Yes, yes. Within the region and the United States, it's a written uh, card that can mm -hmm. be easily replaced. Uh, so in, in trying to get our uh, population fully vaccinated, we have to also look at ways of foolproofing the system to ensure that they aren't uh, more fraudulent cases being detected locally. I do agree with you in the quest for making sure that the vaccination cards are uh, legitimate and they're easy to be detected when they're fraudulent or not, uh, similar to what we've seen uh, in, in countries like Antigua and across the region where there is a QR code. Uh, but in regards to the, uh, the quest for uh, vaccines, vaccination options, uh, I find it very interesting. Uh, we have been asking these questions from the onset mm -hmm. of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and upon receiving the AstraZeneca AstraZeneca vaccine, uh, we have been asking, well, why um, aren't we seeking to uh, source uh, uh, equipment and machinery that would allow us to store additional vaccines? And at the time, um, I believe the answer we got was it is not of paramount importance or it was not of paramount mm -hmm. importance at that time. However, we see where the option to go to the U.S. Virgin Islands to get uh, the uh, vaccine was done and, and some 234 persons and mm -hmm. I and it I don't want to be selfish by saying only 234 persons uh, because it is a valid number but when you have persons really pleading for an additional option and then you have an additional option be it as it may not everyone would have been able to travel uh, to the u.s virgin Islands to do it the numbers still don't Same add up though. for persons who mm -hmm. are legitimately uh seeking to have uh, the vaccine in another option uh, albeit if this this uh, plan does come to fruition we will see where if persons do really want the option then we would see exactly how much but at this point as we've seen the vaccination rates uh, continue to drop in the territory for me, when I observe the, the statistics, it does not seem like a, a legitimate um, a quest by residents to get vaccinated, be it or not having additional options. And that's just a personal observation. Well, we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that. And but because one of the, uh, the other important things we want to ensure doesn't happen is uh, these vaccines continue to go to waste. We've seen that in the past, many vaccines times. expiring. Um, and in Ghana, we say too many cooks spoil the broth. Sometimes when you have too many options, it's harder to choose. But uh, the government is seemingly trying their best to meet the needs uh, and, and provide wider options for the population. But just like the vaccinations mm -hmm. are being gifted to us by the UK, I think the UK could also gift us the system of uh, 
of making sure that we are able to to validly check vaccination cards, Understood. whatever systems they're in using. In that matter, I totally by way understand. Of gifting the us. validation is important. Our yes. viewers, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back after what from our sponsors. Brilliant Hands and Minds Tutoring Services, one-on-one -on -one tutorials in math and English, intense homework assistance, academic enrichment, school projects, effective communication and public speaking development, sign language for adults and children on Saturdays only, registered with the Virgin Islands High School Certificate Program, Brilliant Hands and Minds can help you too. Offering intense curriculum-based training to help you or your loved ones get their high school diploma. It's time to make your family's education a number one priority. Hurry, space is limited. Brilliant Hands and Minds Learning Center. We are the trained education professionals. Viewers, welcome back to 284 News. Now, big news coming out of the United States of America. The Biden administration will require all international travelers coming into the United States to be fully vaccinated and tested for COVID-19 under a new system that will open up air travel to vaccinated foreign nationals from dozens of countries for the first time since the early days of the pandemic. Now, starting in early November, foreign nationals will be allowed to fly into the U.S. if they are fully vaccinated and able to show proof of vaccination prior to boarding a U.S.-bound flight, White House COVID coordinator Mr. Jeffrey Zients said. Now, the requirement will ease travel restrictions that limited entry into the U.S. in many cases for non-citizens who had recently been in 33 countries, including many European nations and the United Kingdom, regardless of their vaccination status. But for travelers outside of those countries, the new system will put stricter requirements in place that could be a barrier to those living in countries where vaccines are in short supply. Now, Mr. Jeffrey Zients said, and I quote, we will move to this much stricter global system, so we will have a consistent approach across all countries. It will require uh, foreign nationals to be vaccinated, to prove they're vaccinated, and then to go through the testing and contact tracing regimens, Zion said. Now, viewers, the U.S. will also start putting into place additional testing requirements, he said. Foreign nationals will have to be tested three days prior to departure to the U.S. and show proof of a negative test and unvaccinated Americans will have to test within one day of departure and be required to test again after their arrival. The CDC will also require airlines to collect information for each U.S. bound traveler, including their phone number and email address, and to aid public health officials in contact tracing. While there is still no vaccination requirement for domestic air travel, Zions said nothing is off the table. Zions said, and I quote, we clearly have a track record that shows we're pulling available levers to acquire vaccinations and we're not taking any measure measures off the table on specific authorities used for implementation, he said. Zions did in detail what vaccines will qualify and what would constitute as fully vaccinated and said that the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, which is, of course, CDC, would provide further details. The new policy applies only to air travel and not land border crossings, which have been closed to non-essential travel between Canada and Mexico. Ron, 
big developments oh, yes, coming indeed. out of uh, the United States of America. Clearly, we've been monitoring uh, the COVID-19 updates out of the U.S. Uh, being one of the biggest, uh, probably the epicenter for a very long time during this COVID-19 pandemic. They have been setting a lot of trends. I think the world over is looking at what the United States is doing, and in particularly the region and even in the BVI, mm -hmm. we say when the U.S. sneezes, we catch a cold. So it's important for us to continue to monitor what's happening. But interesting updates as we see of now a vaccination policy for entry into the U.S. Like you said earlier, and like we were discussing, uh, with the uh, high demand as it progresses across the region and internationally, like we're seeing, uh, with the need to uh, have the vaccination uh, for travelers, um, even persons who uh, may need to receive medical attention, uh, we too in the territory need to make sure that our policies and our systems are aligned with international standards mm -hmm. to make it a as easy as possible for not only locals to travel, to receive uh, uh, attention, but for visitors to come to the territory as well. I think uh, what the U.S., uh, the step that the U.S. Uh, has taken is not one that should be taken lightly. I think it's a, it's a big step and it's one that we, we have to learn from. Absolutely, and not just in regards to tourism uh, and tourists <laughs> is the movement of that, but we also have to take into account that we trade very heavily with the United yes. States as well. So. Uh, we will continue to monitor what's happening out there. Viewers, we're panning across to Bahamas. Menaces out as the Progressive Liberal Party, uh, led by attorney Philip Davis, won a landslide of victory in the general election held last Thursday, September 16th, 2021. Prime Minister uh, Hubert Minnis, who had been hoping to become the first prime minister in 24 years to win a second five-year term, already uh, conceded defeat and congratulated Davis. He said, and I quote, I offered him my best wishes as he and his government now face the continued fight against COVID-19 and the restoration of the Bahamian economy. The Bahamas is struggling to recover, of course, from its deepest economic crash since at least 1971, triggered, of course, by the uh, pandemic and Hurricane Dorian. Davis, who watched the results once in from Cat Island, thanked and promised Bahamians that a new day will come. He said, and I quote, in the morning, we will rise as one nation and meet the challenges ahead. Thank you for seeing the possibilities of what we can build together for our children and grandchildren. Prime Minister Davis was officially sworn in as Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas on Friday, 17 September 2021, at the office of the Governor General. In his speech, Davis said no government can do great things on its own. He said, and I quote, I am sure that my government can only succeed if we partner with the Bahamian people. We are going to listen, we are going to consult widely, and we are going to bring people together. Now, of course, the CARICOM election observation mission uh, in the general election in the Bahamas on Thursday has declared that the elections reflect and the will of the people. Initial assessment of election day activities by CEOM is that the voters were able to cast their ballots without intimidation or fear. The six-member observation mission, which was led by Eon Hughes, a human resource and training officer and assistant to the supervisor of elections, Antigua and Barbuda Electoral Commission, also comprised nationals of Dominica, Jamaica, and Suriname. CARICOM Secretary General Dr. Carla Barnett has congratulated the newly elected Prime Minister of the Bahamas, Mr. Philip Davis, and his progressive Liberal Party. Uh, Jovan, we see once again where our colleagues and uh, friends over in Bahamas have proceeded uh, with their election process. We're happy to hear that they have uh, successfully completed a safe uh, election process and are now moving forward uh, in hopes of uh, serving the people. We have to keep the ball going. Yes. COVID does not stop the party. We have to really get on with our business. I'm really happy to see our brothers and sisters within the region doing what they have to do to move forward. But viewers, that is all the time we have for today. We want to remind you, as usual, yes. there is only so much that we could cover on our 30-minute newscast daily. I want to remind you to check out our website, 284media.com. Not only do we have a, a number of articles speaking to local, regional, and international content. There's also videos for you to Indeed. binge watch Lots on. Of videos. Lots of videos. So please check out our website, 284media.com. Viewers, uh, you, we're also on Facebook at 284media and also on Instagram and Twitter at 284BVI. As usual, it has been my absolute pleasure. My name is Javon Wilson. And I'm Ron Grant. We will see you tomorrow, God's willing. Have a happy Tuesday and a good rest of the day. Bye-bye.